Uh, Public Lab is um, uh, a community and a nonprofit, um, and we do environmental work with um, people all over the world, and we really try to um, address environmental issues that affect people. What we do, we call community science, and um, I think some people sometimes think of Public Lab's work as translating science to the public in a sense, but I, I really think it's, more, it's not exactly it. We work a little on the inside and a little on the outside, and what we try to do um, is actually distinct from citizen science. Citizen science is often defined as people uh, assisting uh, scientists in the collection of data or in, the, in, in doing science, um, and it's, uh, it's admirable, it's good work, but community science uh, is about uh, placing uh, environmental or placing scientific issues that affect communities, which are often environmental issues, at the center of the discourse and communities at the center of, of addressing some of these problems. Um, and a community science involves people not only in data collection, but in all aspects of the scientific method and the scientific process. Uh, and we specifically at Public Lab, we support communities who are investigating local environmental issues that might affect them and their health. Uh, oil spills, chemical spills, uh, effects of the oil and gas industry. And through this work, we get a lot of questions about how knowledge is produced at all, like in general, at the, in, in the broader sense, and, and really specifically how expertise functions. Um, who, can, who gets to ask the questions or, or act on the answers? Um, our model, which has been turned into an oval instead of a circle, um, but that's okay, that's okay, um, is to, to place the, the communities that are facing problems at the center of the work, but also to engage, for example, formal science and technology communities, DIY maker communities, educators, learners, free culture activists, community organizers, facilitators. And as you can imagine, um, that, oh well, uh, at least the images aren't wider than they are supposed to be, right? Uh, the, the, the aspect ratio is correct on the images, even if they're moved. Um, <coughs> it involves a lot of cultural work. So um, bridging gaps, I mean, people speak different um, uh, domain-specific languages. Um, people aren't used to uh, thinking of how other people approach, approach topics or, or, or work through issues. And, and a lot of this is really about equity. It, it, it goes beyond open source. Because in a sense, open source, the idea, or open access, the idea that everyone should have equal access to it is not as powerful or deep an idea as the idea that people have been prevented from having equal access. And so we have to do uh, proportional work to make up those gaps and to bridge those gaps. And um, uh, Max Liborn gives a great talk on equity versus equality that, that you should watch instead of listening to me on the subject. But, um, and so a lot of this ends up being work not only on making science's findings accessible, but its methods, its tools, who actually participates in it, uh, in, in it uh, the structural issues. Um, and this means both making uh, more accessible on-ramps into science, uh, environmental science in particular, but also challenging what's possible uh, or uh, what questions are asked by leveraging peer production uh, and, and using an open source collaboration model, um, engaging people who have, been, who have not been included in uh, science processes, uh, but people who have key and critical questions. So a lot of people may ask like, wh why this image actually has been stretched, just for the record. Um, uh, why do it yourself? Like why, why go through the trouble of inventing new tools or inventing uh, new processes or like why can't we just um, s scale science up so that everyone can do it like make it more more available um, and then you know but but in it's in basically unchanged and if more people can do it then we're okay so it's more like an, like an edu educational model um, and I think it's because for all that they can do, experts often have a, a pretty narrow conception of where the public might become involved in, sci in, in science. Uh, public dissemination of science, for example, or, d or data entry, or, or where science might lead us. Uh, Sandra Harding talks about how um, the public should be more involved in selecting problematics, choosing the problems which we should engage in. And communities that are facing something like an oil spill are well placed to be uh, driving uh, where, w what kinds of questions science should be uh, addressing and what kind of evidence we should be collecting to, you know, uh, to uh, uh, achieve uh, greater environmental justice. Um, so, and then of course cost is another barrier, I think. So uh, we have to address uh, some of the issues of like building your own tools because the existing tools are too expensive. 
Um, just for an example, okay, I'm gonna, uh, I'll move faster. Uh, part of recognizing and respecting different forms of expertise. This is actually a picture from the Gowanus Canal, an, uh, a, a balloon, uh, balloon mapping project. Uh, so a lot of what Public Lab does, one of our biggest projects is balloon mapping, taking aerial photos with balloons. Uh, and this one revealed an inflow uh, into the canal that the EPA Superfund process had not discovered. Uh, and, and an engineering survey of the site had not discovered. And it, it was local uh, activists who, who knew the canal, knew the patterns, they knew to go and take a picture when it was frozen because that, that little channel coming out above the word and is melted ice from that inflow. And so there's local expertise that is really powerful that we want to, um, to uh, reify and amplify. And uh, as part of our sort of embrace of what Sandra Harding again calls uh, strong empiricism. Uh, the idea that like if we double down on the idea of evidence-based uh, knowledge that w that it can be more equitable uh, through that approach. Um, demystifying is another uh, way we approach this. I wanted to note this, it, it's stretched, <coughs> sorry. Um, but uh, it's one of our better known projects, it's a paper craft spectrometer that you can build, you can download the plans, it's all open source. But part of the idea here is to break down um, what instrumentation means um, through a hands-on uh, practice, through artifacts, through the selection of materials. This is another version of that kit that's actually made out of Legos. So we speak through the choice of materials, we speak through the language we use to describe these things, and um, that, rep that reflects our community values at Public Lab. Um, and I think, just to wrap it up, um, one of the projects I wanted to highlight was one where people are making DIY microscopes to uh, analyze uh, samples of uh, silica dust, respirable silica dust that results from frac sand mining um, in the Wisconsin area and other places. And really, like, what is a microscope? And so to try to demystify, break that down, create on-ramps into that, and to enable people to build their own cheap microscopes that are good enough to actually see particles at the scale that respirable sil silica uh, occurs at, um, we, we have a, a, a basic microscope kit that we distribute, uh, and it's building on a lot of other open hardware efforts, uh, collaborations, and so forth. Uh, so that's just one example of how we do it. But I think the gist of this is that um, do-it-yourself means changing how we produce knowledge, not just um, you know, uh, taking the existing framework and scaling it up, but actually looking at some of the structural issues that prevent people who most need uh, a more robust environmental science framework um, to have access to it and to have agency and the ability to direct it. Thank you very much.